it's not as cut and dry as you think there. You know, you gotta worry about price, you know, build quality if you want something that's metal or even, you know, the cheapest plastic on planet Earth, you know, back in the 80s. Um, be careful if it has a built-in flash, the portability of it, the type of film it takes, the cost per pack, cost per shot. Um, you know, if it has a self-timer, if it has autofocus, if it has a built-in flash, if not, you know, how much of the flash is on that, you know. There's a lot of different factors that are, you know, involved in this type of thing. You can't just jump in like you want to. You there? Hello? If you clicked on this video, you're curious about which Polaroid camera you should be sinking your cold, hard money into. Today, I'm going to be diving into the, one of the hardest questions to answer since the dawn of the human race, and that's which one of these bad boys is right for you and that you should buy. Let's get right into it. Now, before we start this video, I want to preface it by saying that I will not be covering the Instax line, just because I don't have the Instax square, I don't have the Instax wide, but I really want to get some of those cameras. I've been, I've been putting some bids in on eBay trying to acquire some, but I will not be covering these because, honestly, they're in a league of their own in the terms of film chemistry, camera availability, and like all that good stuff so I will not be covering these even though I know they exist I have one I use it on the regular look cute little green guy so uh, I'm not gonna be covering that strictly Polaroid cameras and the film so yeah so at the bottom of our price bracket we have the one step SX70 cameras um, these are very lackluster in features only featuring a shutter button exposure compensation and a slot for a flash um, it does have a offset viewfinder on this side, so you got to account for parallax and a plastic lens in there. Um, the build quality of these is very cheap, uh, cheapest plastic on the planet they could find, I'm guessing, to keep the cost down. And it takes SX70 film, which is not that common. You can't really buy it. I don't even think you can buy it in Best Buy. I only think you can buy it in like Target or whatever. So that's a downside. Um, it does come in with a built-in strap. I mean, if you can, if you consider that a up, if you consider that a good thing, I mean, more power to you. But uh, yeah, so price with these, they're coming in around ten to thirty dollars on eBay in you know average condition, untested or tested. You're gonna find them all in that range, or you can go with Retrospect or a camera refurbishing website like that, and you're gonna be spending right around seventy dollars which I would not recommend because of how lackluster these features are with this camera and the skill gap you're going to hit with this, you're going to be like, okay, I want manual focus or I want, you know, a built-in flash or something more than just the bare bones features of this. But if you don't really care about it, you can toss it off a cliff and really not, really not uh, have too much emotion about it because of how cheap it is and how readily available these are. So yeah. Coming in at our next price bracket, we have these 600 box cameras. They call it a box camera for a reason. Boom, just transformed into a box. One of the coolest transformers out there. Um, these are, oops, slapped it down again. These are, these can be pretty feature rich. Um, not as feature rich as the later cameras, but this does feature a built-in flash right up here. This one has a little dial you can switch over for close-ups, which not all of them have exposure compensation and a trigger to fire without the flash or with the flash once again offset viewfinder and a plastic lens so these range in price quite drastically depending on which one you get rarer ones like this one which is a state farm one is gonna run you uh, a little bit more than the regular one-step flashes that are more common and more readily available but these are gonna take 600 film which is more available, you can buy it at like Best Buy, you can buy it almost everywhere that like uh, instant photography stuff is sold, like Walmart and all that. Or you can go on the Polaroid website and buy it off of there for a reduced price. Um, these are gonna be clocking in about $20 to $50 for the uh, run of the mill ones, nothing, pretty, nothing too crazy. Um, and that's of course untested or tested condition and everything, everything that depends right in there. Um, also with these, uh, if you buy them off of a refurbished website like Retrospect or something like that, they're going to be running you closer to 120 somewhere around that neighborhood. So a little expensive, but for what it is, you know, it's not a bad, it's not a bad camera by any means, but 
uh, you can definitely get more bang for your buck as we're gonna see in the next one. The next camera is the 600 cooler cousin, the Impulse AF. We're skipping, we're skipping over the Impulse, the regular one, nada, we're not doing that. We're just going to the Impulse AF here, which features uh, the Sonar Autofocus, which this camera should have, uh, the Sonar Autofocus, exposure comp, flash that always has to be on, that's stupid, but one of the biggest things is the self timer. Um, offset viewfinder as usual, plastic lens, um, little button on the back, one press, you can't, can't half press it or anything like that. So the reason why this camera is such a freaking good camera is because of the autofocus. You can get pretty sharp pictures with this and uh, it's got, it's got self, it's got a self timer. So, I mean, you get all your homies in the picture, boom, set it up on a tripod, get a tripod mount. But uh, get all your homies in the picture and the build quality, still got the plastic feel, but I mean, you can toss this, you can toss it around, do it basically whatever you want with it and it'll survive. Um, so take 600 film, which is pretty common with these. Um, you can also get these off of eBay for anywhere from 20 to 50, similar to the box cameras. That's why I put them right next to each other on the chart. But these are gonna be more bang for your buck because of the autofocus and just how freaking handy that is. Plus the design is more, I found to be more portable than the 600 box cameras, just because I could slip it in a bag like this and it's really only that thick and it really doesn't take up that much room. So, and of course the uh, self timer is a huge thing. I know I keep talking about the self timer, but no other camera has it. Um, price is gonna depend, once again, I know it's weird, it's gonna depend on color. Uh, the green ones are super rare, the yellow ones are super rare. The purple ones are like, eh, blue ones, eh, a little bit more. The gray and the black ones are gonna run you that 20 to 50 range. And then if you want it uh, refurbished or anything like that, it's gonna be around 120 from retrospect, blah, 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 blah. You know the whole spiel. Um, so let's get on to the next one. So coming in on the next price bracket, we have the One Step Plus, the new Polaroid camera. This has Bluetooth, which has a bunch of features. This is the most fe feature rich camera on this list that they offer. It has a little slider for close-ups and far away shots. It's got exposure comp, Bluetooth, built-in flash, flash override. It has a built-in battery so it can take i-type film, which is gonna save you about $2 a pack on average. Um, the stuff you can do with Bluetooth is you can do light painting, come on focus. You can do light painting, you can do double exposures. There's a whole laundry list of stuff you can do with this. But the price and availability of these, uh, they only come out with two colors, which is white and black. They both right around the same price. But uh, these are pretty common on eBay nowadays because people, you know, they shoot a couple packs of them. They're getting rid of them and they want, you know, they, they didn't think they'd use them as much. So I got this one for around 40, which when it first came out was kind of obs obs you know, obscene. Like you never see that. And then I just got one that's white for 50, which is, I wouldn't go by those prices at all. But um, the average around these for brand new is around 120. You can find them for 80 plus, I think. It's pretty common for these. And then for the regular one step, without the Bluetooth, it's around 80, like under 80. I wouldn't spend over 80. And then they have the Polaroid Now, which just came out. Um, that's right around 100. So that's, eh, I don't know if I do that. I definitely get this just because of the Bluetooth connectivity and all the good stuff you can do with that. But um, yeah, you can really only buy them new or you can buy them off eBay. They're gonna work because they're basically brand new and they haven't they haven't aged much. I think they've been up like two years, so that's a good thing. The iType film is wicked cheap, so that's another good thing for this. And uh, let's get on to the next one. Oh, wait, 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 build quality. I got a pack of film in here, so it's a little bit more solid than usual. but. The build quality is pretty good on this. I've thrown it in a bag a couple times and really hasn't scratched that much. I usually toss it in bottom first, but it hasn't, oh man, just don't focus, I guess. But uh, yeah, build quality is pretty good with this. It's not the best, but yeah, let's get on to the next one. Coming in second to last is the SX70, the regular one. This is the original one that they came out with. Um, yeah, so features with this, you just get a shutter button, manual focus, which, all right, manual focus, uh, exposure comp, and then a glass lens with 
SLR capabilities. This thing's just just the golden child and it has a little accessory port for any accessories that you got with this. Um, there is an accessory box right there. If it wants to focus, it's back there. It's a box with a little diamond on it, which I'm pointing at right now. In that box, it comes with a bunch of accessories that you can use with this, including a tripod mount, which it does not have stock, but the newer ones do. Um, this camera is, it's got a glass lens, so it's gonna be sharper, and you got a lot of freedom with the manual focus and all that good stuff. Uh, price with these and availability is gonna range, you know, sometimes there's a lot of them I see on eBay and sometimes they're not, but price is gonna range 80 plus, and that's like bottom of the barrel for 80. That's gonna be, you know, maybe it's working, but the leather's gonna be all cracked up because the most common thing with these is the leather's all cracked up. But I found this one pretty good condition. The leather's not cracked up and it hasn't been replaced at all. So this was the original leather it came with way back yesteryear. So yeah, these are gonna be 80 plus and you just gotta make sure if you wanna take the chance on eBay, you find one that's confirmed working or you can go the refurbished route and get something which I think off of all the websites, it's around 200 plus for these, which a little steep, but um, I've definitely taken some chances and taken some losses on these, but um, I haven't spent much on these anyway. Uh, these take SX-70 film, which I said before is not readily available, but um, that's definitely something you can overcome with an ND filter, I haven't talked about that yet, which is a little piece of plastic you can put over 600 film and turn it into SX-70 film which is very handy. I definitely recommend just getting a uh, 600 film instead of SX-70 film, just because of the versatility of it and all that. So yeah, also, oh, totally forgot. Uh, has a little flash port at the top. Totally forgot about that. And yeah, cool design, very, uh, very robust. Uh, very, this first one is all the outer casing on it's metal. And yeah, very sturdy. We'll do a little knock test. I won't do it too hard, but pretty, Pretty dang solid if you ask me. So, uh, let's get on to the next one. Totally forgot to mention they have a Sonar Autofocus one, which uh, is pretty cool. It's right around the same price of the SX-70, the regular one. Uh, just depends on if you want autofocus or not. And these usually come with a tripod mount and all that goodness. It's basically the same thing, just uh, autofocus and tripod mount. And last but not least, the cream of the mall freaking crop is the 680 and 690 cameras which feature built-in autofocus built-in tilting flash let's get a let's get a little shot of that first hold on i know it doesn't move much but here let me get focus on that i mean it's moving it moves a lot more if you're farther away but um yeah this camera's pretty insane comes out of the box even though it looks like an sx70 it shoots 600 film no ND filter needed here. Um, it's got all the same accessory port on the side. It's got the SLR kind of um, the viewfinder, and it's a let's let's do the knock test. Let's do the knock test. Pretty solid. Um, the top does kind of wiggle a little bit. Let me get that in focus. It does wiggle a little bit. It kind of scares me sometimes, but um, yeah, portability with this is not not great if we do comparison with the SX70. It's got the added, you know, the added bulk to it because of the built-in flash and autofocus. Um, so the SX70 is definitely more portable, and you can kind of just toss anywhere. This you got to kind of make room in your bag. You got to make like a specific spot for this bad boy to sit, but. Um, I had this one replaced, so it's going to look absolutely pristine because I got it replaced from Retrospect. Um, got this thing for $12 on eBay, which when I tell you the price is going to be absurd, but I got this thing for $12, had it replaced for $200, which I think is a pretty good uh, pretty good, pretty good deal for me. Um, so I got it off of eBay, mine was $12 shipped, taxes and everything, um, which is unheard of because these usually go for brand new, um, in working condition they usually go for $600 plus. Um, but you can find them on eBay for 200 around that area. Not tested, not confirmed working is usually the uh, state I find them in. But the guy didn't know what this one was, so I got it for $12. And then uh, had it fixed for 200 so I'm in at $212, all said and done, working camera, which is pretty good. Um, you can find them, though, for, like I said, 200 plus in eh condition, and then you can get it replaced. But 
If you want to buy them brand new, they are going to cost you right around $600. But they do take 600 film, which is more readily available, blah, blah, blah. You already heard the film story. And uh, yeah, that's going, to be, uh, that's going to be it for this one. So wrapping everything up, I'm going to do my recommendations for cameras. For the beginner, we are going to go for the Impulse AF. Just because of how cheap this is, it takes 600 film. You don't really have to do anything with it. It's got the built-in flash. You don't need to get an external flash. It's got the autofocus. You can't really mess that up. And um, it's got the self-timer. So if you and the homies want to get into a picture, you can. Uh, the build quality is fine with this. I mean, if you're getting it for like 40 bucks, then you really can't complain. Um, I mean, it's going to last you. And if you ever need to get it fixed, there's places to get it fixed if you really think that highly of your camera and want to you know keep it forever there is options for you and for the double feature we have the recommendation for the more advanced crowd and that's going to be the sx70 whichever one you might go with just because it has the glass lens and it has the slr capabilities so you can be uh we could really be more creative with taking pictures with it and all that so that's what i would recommend and you can just slap an ND filter on 600 film and have SX70 film. So yeah, that is going to wrap up the um, recommendations and like basically I'm going to probably call this the ultimate guide for Polaroids. Um, if I missed anything, please let me know in the comments and then, you know, maybe I'll make a revised list um, later on. And I will get to the Instax uh, lineup once I do acquire some of the cameras. Right now I only have the mini one. And I want to get like the, the wide, the square, and I want to get like the Lomography version of those so they're nice. And I can actually test some good equipment. So uh, that's going to wrap it up for these though. Um, I, do, I do have a lot of cameras that I want to show off. So maybe in the next video I'll show off some of them. And I'll do a couple, you know, in-depth reviews like I did with the 680 that I got. So um, yeah, just want to say thank you guys for watching. And if this helped you out, drop a like, drop a sub. Helps out a lot. And uh, I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.